In this video, we're going to go over sending digital and analog commands. When I turn on an input, I can see that command switch 01 is sent. I have an LED that turned on on my panel, and I have a little yellow indicator that turned on on my Vista screen. When I flip the input switch off, we can see that the command comp switch 01 has turned off. We can tell it's off because the little light next to it is showing as non-illuminated, and in the state, we can see that it says off. This is how commands are sent across network. A physical change occurs, a node reads that change, and then a command is sent. But this is not the only way. Using diagnostics, we can actually simulate an input being flipped. To simulate the input being flipped, I first need to actually select the command that I want to send on or off. I'm going to click the category group, and I'm going to select door switches. When door switches, I'm going to scroll down until I find comp switch 01. So I'm going to send the same command that the input switch was doing. I can toggle this either on or off. In this case, I'm going to do off. And I press the send button. We can see down at the bottom now in diagnostics that I have sent comp switch 01 as off. We can also see that the data is zero, matching my data up here. Now I'm going to send it on. We can see that when I turn it on, the green LED comes back on, and the little yellow indicator light down the bottom left has showing on as well. Currently, the input switch is in the off position. So let's move it to the on position. When I move the switch into the on position, the command comp switch 01 gets sent on again. So now we have the last message being on and newest message being on. This doesn't change the indicator on the display or the LED status because the LED and indicator are on with comp switch 01 on. We simply send it on again so there was no status change. This is important because VMEX works off the last command. The last status of the command is what's currently accepted throughout the system. It doesn't matter whether it's from the laptop or from a node. The last command sent is what the current status is. Let's flip the switch to the off position. Despite sending it on from my laptop and on from the actual switch, once I flip it off, the last command is comp switch 01 off. That means that now the LED is going to turn off and the yellow indicator line is going to turn off. If I flip the switch back into the on position, I can then use diagnostics to send the command off. It works in both directions. The on will be overwritten by the switch, and the off can be overwritten in diagnostics and override the switch. What would happen if I sent on several times? Now, if I flip the switch to the off position, the last command is comp switch 01 off, and so the LED and the yellow indicator light turn off. It's always based on the last command sent. The same goes if I send a bunch of offs. Sending off several times doesn't make any difference to the system. It simply sees the last command as off, and now when I flip the switch into the on position, it sees the last command as on. Now the LED and the indicator come back on. Flip the switch back to the off position, and now everything's back off again. Let's add some more inputs. We're going to turn on comp switch 2 and comp switch 3. I'm also going to use my laptop to send comp switch 01 on and comp switch 04 on. We now have four yellow indicators and four LEDs. We can also see in the data column that two of these were sent by a data 1, which is node 1, and two of them were sent by a data 0, which we can see is up here in this corner, and that's my laptop. Cycling the switches from on to off or straight to the off position, we can see that I've turned off all of the commands. All the LEDs are off, all the indicators are off. The same can be said for the Vista screens. I'm going to turn on several of the buttons on the Vista screens. You can see that we have LEDs turning on, but this time we have buttons that can actually reflect that they're on. This is because the Vista buttons typically are programmed to be three-way. I'm going to turn one of them off now. Unlike a physical switch which has an on position and an off position, these virtual buttons don't. This means that I can turn off the command and actually have the button turn off. If I was to press the button again, the command would be sent as on because the Vista knows the last command was off, and so the next command should be on. If you're ever having trouble trying to find where a command is that you've seen on the screen, so if we're trying to find pump panel lights, and we just can't seem to figure out where they are, simply put your mouse over that command and double click it with the left mouse button. This will load its information up for you. Now I can change the status to off and send the command. Notice how it also copied the data too, which was in that command that I double clicked. The data doesn't matter in these cases, it's just a representation of to what node it came from, and so sending it from any node will not change how the command is affected. 
I'm going to go ahead and send the floodlights off as well. So now I've effectively turned off all those commands using diagnostics. Regardless of where the commands are sent from, we can go through and we can send them from the laptop and any data location and it doesn't make a difference. Now let's go through and turn everything back on using diagnostics. We're going to turn on another command that we haven't seen yet, which is the ELED Amber to turn on the other button. Now, with all the buttons on using diagnostics, I'm going to go through and physically turn them off using button presses. So as we can see here, we can effectively turn on or off any command sent from the Vista screens or any physical buttons. Now let's move on to analogs. To view analog information, we're going to zoom out here in diagnostics. The top part where it says System Voltage VMUX 13.5+, inside temperature of 149. These are analog information. Analog information is updated every few seconds. This means that we're constantly getting information in to update these items, unlike the digital messages, which we only see coming in when an action occurs. To send an analog command, we need to select the category Analog Devices. Now find the command that we're looking for, in this case, inside temperature 1. Now we're going to use the data column to send 65. Notice how it changes from 149 to 65, but only for a few seconds. Notice how each time I send it, within a couple seconds, it changes back to 149. This is because it's an analog piece of information. I can show you what's going on by right-clicking the dialog box here and selecting Show All Messages. What this will do is now show you analog messages as they're coming into diagnostics. They're going to show up down here in the bottom. So we'll be able to see that every three seconds, we're getting updates on voltage and temperature. We can see system voltage and inside temperature are now being sent in. I'm going to just going to send a random command here, and you can see that the commands will all just line up for you in order of what rows received. Now, if I try and send analog information to overwrite temperature, we can see exactly what's happening in the upper dialog. I sent a piece of information. In this case, I sent the temperature to zero. However, within a couple seconds, temperature of 149 was red, and therefore that was sent across the network. This is just like flipping the input on or off after sending a command from diagnostics. It's simply overriding my action. The only way of stopping the system from updating this temperature while I'm sending a new temperature would be to remove the actual temperature sensor from the input. If the input is removed, there is no ability for it to read that value anymore. This concludes the VMUX Diagnostics tutorial on sending digital commands and analog commands.